Before we start working with similarity, you need to make sure that you understand and can work with the rules and theorems learnt in geometry so far. When you solve geometry problems, you need all the knowledge and theorems at your fingertips. Also, new theorems make use of facts that have been confirmed in previous theorems. Before we prove that triangles are similar, let's revise the properties of similar shapes. Two shapes are similar when the only difference between them is their size or area. Similar shapes have all corresponding angles equal and all corresponding sides in the same proportion. Here are two irregular pentagons, A, B, C, D, E, and F, G, H, J, K. The shapes are the same even though their orientation is different and their sizes are different. The corresponding angles are equal, so A equals angle F, angle B equals angle G, all the way to angle E equals angle K. The sides are in proportion, which means that the ratio of AB to FG equals the ratio of BC to GH, and so on. Notice that since a pentagon has five sides and five interior angles, there are five pairs of corresponding angles and five pairs of corresponding sides. Remember, the symbol to indicate similarity is three vertical lines. We can write A, B, C, D, E is similar to F, G, H, J, K, like this. The order of the letters of the vertices of the similar shapes is very important. The order shows which corresponding angles are equal to each other and which sides are in proportion. Prove that triangles are similar if we can prove that the corresponding angles are equal. Here is a tip for finding all equal corresponding angles. If two of the corresponding angles are equal, the third angles will also be equal because the sum of the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. We can also prove that triangles are similar if we can prove that the corresponding sides are in the same proportion. In other words, the ratios of corresponding sides are equal. So, the ratio of AB to DE equals the ratio of BC to EF and the ratio of AC to DF. Using the angles, we have a theorem that proves that equiangular triangles are similar. The term equiangular means that the three angles of the one triangle are equal to the corresponding angles of another triangle. To prove the theorem, we choose two triangles, ABC and DEF, and label them in that order. They are given to be equiangular, so we know that angle A equals angle D, B equals E, and C equals F. We need to prove that the ratio of AB to DE is the same as the ratio of BC to EF, and the ratio of of AC to DF. Start by drawing two triangles, ABC and DEF. Notice which angles correspond in the two triangles. Now, we are going to mark off points on the sides AB and AC of triangle ABC so that we can create a new triangle on the triangle ABC that is exactly the same size of triangle DEF. Mark off point G on side AB so that the length AG equals length DE. Mark off point H on side AC so that the length AH equals length DF. We have now constructed triangle AGH inside triangle ABC so that AG equals DE and AH equals DF. Now we can get on with proving the theorem. Look at the triangles AGH and ABC. If we can prove that GH is parallel to BC, then we can make use of the proportion theorem that we learnt earlier. 
The proportion theorem says that a line drawn parallel to the one side of a triangle divides the other two sides in proportion. If we get angle AGH equals to angle B, then we can prove that GH is parallel to BC. One way to do this is to prove that triangle AGH is congruent to triangle DEF. Triangles AGH and DEF already have AG equal to DE and AH equal to DF by construction. We also know that angle A is equal to angle D. So, we know that triangles AGH and DEF are congruent. The congruency reason is side angle side. The angle is included between the two equal sides. Now we can use congruency to identify any remaining angles or sides that are equal and useful to the proof. We will use angle AGH equals angle E. But we were given that angle E is equal to angle B. So it follows that angle AGH equals angle B. That's exactly what we want to continue with the proof. These two equal angles are corresponding, which means GH must be parallel to BC. That means that we can apply the proportion theorem to triangle ABC and say that the ratio of AB to AG equals the ratio of AC to AH. We already know by construction that AG equals DE and AH equals DF, so we can replace AG with DE and AH with DF in this equation. This gives us that the ratio of AB to DE equals the ratio of AC to DF. Have we proven the theorem yet? Have we proven that the two equiangular triangles are similar? Well, we have proved that two sides are proportional. We need to show that the third side, BC, is proportional to side EF. The proof follows exactly the same steps. When this happens in a proof, we are entitled to use the word similarly, and it is understood that the proof follows the same steps. And so, we know that the ratios of the sides of the triangle ABC to the corresponding sides of the triangle DEF are equal. That makes triangle ABC similar to triangle DEF. We have proved that the equiangular triangles are similar. Example 1. Proving similarity by showing triangles are equiangular. Now we can apply our new theorem in example. Given triangle PQR and triangle PST with PS equal to 4 cm, ST equal to 3 cm and QR equal to 9 cm, Prove that triangle PQR is similar to triangle PST and hence find the length of side PQ. To prove similarity, we can start by outlining the two triangles and see what information we have about the angles. We have a common angle P and angle S and Q are both right angles. The third angle PQS has to be equal to the third angle PRQ because the angles in both triangles have a sum of 180 degrees. And so, the two triangles are similar. The second part of the question usually uses some information from the first part. Take the first part as a hint. We must find the length of side PQ. How does similarity help? Well, it means that the sides of the triangles are in proportion. The ratio of PQ to PS is equal to the ratio of QR to ST. Using the lengths of the sides that we know, we get PQ divided by 4 equals 9 divided by 3. Simplify to find PQ. 
PQ divided by 4 equals 3. So PQ equals 12 centimeters. Our next theorem is the converse of the last theorem. It states that triangles with corresponding sides in proportion are similar. Stated differently, the theorem says that if the corresponding sides of two triangles are in proportion, then the two triangles are similar. We work with two triangles again. We can label them ABC and DEF as before. This time we are given that the sides of the triangles are in proportion. We can immediately write that down as the ratios of the sides AB, AC and BC to the sides DE, DF and EF respectively are equal. As this is the converse, what we need to prove this time is that the corresponding angles are equal. As with the proportion theorem, we can construct GH so that AG equals DE and AH equals DF. Let's talk through the plan of the theorem first and then write down the formal proof. Using the proportion theorem, we will be able to show that GH is parallel to BC. It follows that corresponding angles are equal, so the third angles are also equal and the triangles are similar. Now, using the ratios of sides triangles ABC, AGH and DEF, we can prove that GH equals EF. Now it will be easy to prove that triangles AGF and DEF are congruent. That means that they are also equiangular and therefore similar. Now we can go back to the formal proof. Check the steps against the diagram and check that they make sense. Look at the triangles A, B, C and D, E, F. We are given that the ratio A, B to D, E is equal to the ratio A, C to D, F. Now, look at the constructed triangle A, G, H and the triangle A, B, C. They are in proportion, so the ratio AB to AG is equal to the ratio AC to AH. Therefore, using the proportional sides, we know that GH is parallel to BC. That means that angle B equals angle AGH and angle C equals angle AHG because they are corresponding angles on the parallel lines. The third angle of both triangles is angle A. Therefore, triangle AGH is similar to triangle ABC. The reason we give is AAA, -A -A, which stands for angle, angle, angle. Our next step is to use ratios to show that GH equals EF. In triangle ABC, the ratio GH to BC equals the ratio AG to AB. But because AG equals DE, we can say the ratio AG to AB is also equal to the ratio DE to AB. Likewise, the ratio of GH to BC equals the ratio of EF to BC. Therefore, GH equals EF. We already know that AG equals DE and AH equals DF. So, since we have three sides on one triangle equal to three sides of the second triangle, abbreviated to SSS, meaning side, 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 we can say that the triangle AGH is congruent to triangle DEF. Congruent triangles have to be equiangular and therefore triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. Example 2. Proving triangles similar by proportion of sides. Let's apply the theorem to this example. We are given the triangle PQR with points K, M and N as shown. 
prove that triangle KPM is similar to triangle RNM and determine the length of NQ. Look at the triangles KPM and RNM. We have no information about these angles, but we have the measurements for all the sides of each triangle. So it makes sense to see if the ratios of the sides are equal. If they are, then the corresponding angles are equal and triangles are similar. The ratio of KP to RN using the order of the lessors given in the question is 1,5 to 0,75. 1,5 is double 0,75. So we can simplify to 2 divided by 1. The ratio of Km to Rm is 2,5 to 1,25. That also simplifies 2 to 1. The ratio of Pm to Nm is 2 to 1. So the sides of the triangles are all in proportion. Therefore the triangle Kpm is similar to triangle Rnm. Remember to always include the reason when you make the conclusion. Part 2 of the question is to find the length of NQ. Look at the triangle again. NQ is not the side of any of the triangles. It looks like we can find it if we know the length of QR, which is in triangle PQR. We know that NR is 0, 0,75. We can show that triangle KPM and triangle RPQ are similar. In triangle KPM and triangle RPQ, we have angle P common to both. We also know that angle PKM equals angle R from the question we have just answered. So we know that angle PMK must equal angle Q. And we have proved that triangles KPM and QPR are similar. Look at triangles KPM and QPR. We can use the ratio PM to KM equals the ratio of PR to QR. Substitute the values that we have for these sides. We get 2 divided by 2, 5 equals 3, 2, 5 divided by QR. Cross multiply to get 2 times QR equals 2, 5 times 3, 2, 5. QR equals 4, 06. Now we can just subtract the length of NR from QR to find the length of NQ. This gives us NQ to be equal to 3,31 units. Note that if no units are given in the diagram or the question, we usually refer to units in the answer.